This is for third grade ELA text set 13 Animals Journey, or I think it's 12 Animals Journey. No, it's 13. What does it mean to be loyal? Loyal means showing constant support for someone or something. A loyal friend is one who sticks with you no matter what. The story is about a dog named Hachiko. The story is made up, which is fiction, but is based on a true story of a real dog who lived in Japan. Uh, so Hachiko, the true story of a loyal dog, written by Pamela S. Turner and illustrated by Yun Naskabinin. This story is about a loyal dog. Another word for loyal is faithful. Most dogs are loyal pets, but Hachito was really special. There is a statue of my old dog friend at the entrance to Siberia Station. His bronze feet are bright and shiny, polished by thousands of friendly hands. There is a sign that says simply, Loyal Dog Hachiko. I close my eyes and remember the day we met so long ago. When I was six years old, my family moved to a little house in Tokyo near the Shiba train station. At first, the trains frightened me, but after a while, I grew to enjoy their power and the furious noises they made. One day, I begged Mama to take me to meet Papa as he came home on the afternoon train. She laughed and said, Cantor, you have become big and brave, just like a sum Samurai. Together we walked to the station. Kantio, the boy in the picture, is narrating or telling the story. And it was spring, and the dog day was neat, cold, clear and cold. There were tiny carts all around the station, selling snacks, newspapers, and hundreds of other things to the crowds of people rushing by. Ladies in kimonos walked carefully, trying to keep their white, white tabby socks away from the grime of the streets. Businessmen strode about, hurrying home or to catch another train. Mom and I had stopped near the station entrance when I noticed the dog. He was sitting quietly, all alone by a newspaper stand. He had thick, cream-colored fur, small pointed ears, and a broad, bushy tail that curved up over his back. I wondered if the dog was astray, but he was wearing a nice leather harness and looked healthy and strong. His brown eyes were fixed on the station entrance. Just then, Papa arrived. He was chatting with an older man. The dog pound, bounded over to the man, his entire body whacked, wiggling and quivering with delight. His eyes shone and his mouth curled up into something that looked to me just like a smile. Ah, Cantio, you see Dr. Leon, Leono. You are not the only one who has someone to welcome him, said Papa. He introduced us to the older man. Dr. Uno works with me at Tokyo Imperial University. What is your dog's name? I asked timidly. The dog was beautiful, but his sharp face reminded me of a wolf's. I grabbed Mama's kimono and stepped behind her just in case. Don't be afraid, said Dr. Uno kindly. This is Hachiko. He is a big but still a puppy. He walks me to the station every morning and waits for me to come home every afternoon. I think Hachiko stores up all his joy all day long and then lets it out all at once. Hachiko stood wagging his tail next to Dr. Uno. I reached out to touch him and he bounced forward and sniffed my face. I yelped and jumped back behind Mama. They all laughed. Oh, Kintera, don't worry. He just wants to get to know you, said Dr. Uno. Dogs can tell a lot about people just by smelling them. Why, Hichiko probably knows that you ate for lunch, what you ate for lunch. I sniffed my hands, but it didn't smell like rice balls to me. I reached out and touched Hachiko gently on the shoulder. His fur is so thick and soft, I said, like a bear's. Dogs like Hachiko once hunted bears in the north, where it's very cold and snowy, said Dr. Uno, kneeling down next to me and rubbing Hachiko's hands. So how do you think Hachiko feels about Dr. Uno? Why do you think that? <clears throat> From that day on, I went to the station after almost every afternoon, but I no longer went to see the trains. I went to see Hachiko. He, always, he was always there, waiting near the newspaper stand. I often saved a morsel from my lunch and hid it one of my, 
hid it in one of my pockets, Hachiko could sniff me all over, wagging his tail until he found a sticky bit of fish or soybean cake. Then he would nudge me with his nose as if to say, give me my prize. When it was cold, I would bury my face in the thick ruff of creamy fur around his neck. One day in May, I was waiting at the station with Hachiko. The moment I saw Papa, I knew something was wrong. He was alone, and he walked hunched over, staring sadly at the gray pavement under his feet. So I wonder what is wrong. What's the matter, Papa? I asked him anxiously. Standing with one hand on Hachiko's broad head, he sighed, Kentira, let's go home. Hachiko's bright brown eyes followed us as we walked away, but he stayed behind waiting for Dr. Uno. When we got home, Papa told us that Dr. Uno had died that morning at the university. I was stunned. What will happen to Hachiko? I asked, blinking hard to keep the tears back. What will he, will, will he do? I don't know, said Papa. Perhaps Dr. Uno's relatives will take him in. What about tonight? I asked. Can we go see if he is all right? Papa was very sad and tired, but he walked with me back to Shibai Station. Hachiko was curled up by the newspaper stand. He wagged his tail when he saw us. Papa and I gave him water in an old chip bag, bowl, and some food. Hachiko ate and drank, but he kept looking up toward the station entrance for Dr. Uno. Papa and I left even sadder than we had come. The next day, I went back to check on Hachiko, but he was not there. Papa told me that Hachiko had been taken several miles away to live with some of Dr. Uno's relatives. But I'll never see him again, I cried. Why can't we? he live with us? We don't have room for a dog, protested Papa, and Hachiko really belongs to Dr. Uno's relatives. Now that Dr. Uno is dead, Hachiko is better off having a home than sitting at a train station. But Hachiko had other ideas. A few days later, he was back at Siberia Station, patiently waiting, his brown eyes fixed on the entrance. Hachiko had run back to its old home and from there to Siberia Station. Mama and Papa let me take food and water to Hachiko every day. Mama grumbled a bit about about the food, saying we can't we couldn't afford to feed a big bear like Hachiko, but she always seemed to cook more rice than we could eat. Other people at the station took an interest to Hachiko. Men and women who rode Papa and Dr. Uno's train stopped by to scratch, scratch his ears and say a few kind words. One day I saw an old man filling filling. Hachiko's water bowl as Hachiko licked his hand. The old man's hair was streaked with gray, and he was stooped, as if he had spent most of his life bent over the gram. But his eyes were as sharp and bright as Hachiko's. Are you are you young, Kantira? The, the old man asked. I nodded. I'm Mr. Kabikishka. I was Dr. Uno's gardener. Dr. Uno told me that you and Hachiko often wait for the afternoon train together. So let's stop and think about what has happened since Dr. Uno died. Hachiko goes to live with Dr. Uno's relatives, but he runs back to his old home. He still waits at the train station every day for Dr. Uno. Kantera brings some food, bits of food and to want and to eat, bits of food to eat. People who pass Hachiko at the gas at the station befriend him as well. Do you still take care of the house where Dr. Uno lived? I asked. Yes, said Mr. Kopishia. Hachiko came back to the house every night to sleep on the porch, but in the morning he walks to the station just like he did with Dr. Uno. When the last train leaves the station, he returns home. We both, we were both silent. Then I asked, do you think Hachiko knows that Dr. Uno died? Mr. Kobakia said thoughtfully, I don't know, Kantara. Perhaps we still, he still hopes that Dr. Uno will return some day. Or perhaps he knows Dr. Uno is dead, but he waits all the, at the station to honor his master's memory. As the years passed and Hachiko got older, he became very stiff and could barely walk to Saberi Station, but he still went every day. People began collecting money to build a statue of Hachiko at the station. Papa, Mama, and I gave, all gave money, and we were very happy when the statue was placed next to the spot Hachiko had waited for so many years. One chilly morning, I woke to the sound of Mama crying. What's wrong? I asked as I stumbled into the kitchen. Papa sat silently at the table, and Mama turned her tear-stained face, oh, face to me. Hachiko died last night at Siberia Station, she choked, still waiting for Dr. Uno. 
I was 17 and too big to cry, but I went into the other room and did not come out for a long time. Later that day, we all went to the station. To our great surprise, at Chico's spot near the newspaper, sand was covered in flowers placed there by his many friends. Old Mr. Kapashia was there. He shuffled over to him, to me, and put a hand on my shoulder. Hachiko didn't come home, come back to the house last night, he said quietly. I walked to the station and found him. Heck, um, I walked to the station and found him. I think his spirit is with Dr. Uno, don't you? Yes, I whispered. The big bronze statue of Hachiko is a very famous meeting place. Siberia Station is enormous now, and hundreds of thousands of people travel through it every day. People always say to each other, let's meet Hachiko. Today, Hachiko is a place where friends and family long separated come together again. So how can you tell that Hachiko touched the lives of many people? Story behind the, the story. Some years ago, my family moved to Tokyo, and we rented a home not far from Siberia Station. Everyone, it seemed, knew that Hachiko's statue was the place to meet at the huge train station. No matter what time of day or night I visited Siberia, I would always see someone standing near the large bronze dock with eyes searching the crowd. My Japanese friends told me Hachiko's story. Hachiko was born in northern Japan in no November 1923. And a few months later, he was sent to Dr. Uno in Tokyo. When Dr. Uno died on May 21, 1925, they had been together for just over a year. In October 1932, a newspaper reporter wrote a story about Hichiko. The headline read, A faithful dog awaits the return of a master dead for seven years. People began traveling to Siberia from all over Japan just to pet loyal Hachiko. Hachiko's vigil at Siberia Station lasted almost 10 years. He died March 7, 1935. One year earlier, a bronze statue of Hachiko had been placed near the entrance of Siberia Station, right next to the spot where, the, where he always waited for Dr. Uno. There is an old photo of the real Hachiko next to the bronze ones. Surrounded by a crowd of people, Hachiko seems to be wondering with all, what all this fuss is about.